Hello again. We're, uh, is that, I hope that's perky. Uh, we're going to work on an exercise for computing the minimum cash balance in a corporate model. I tell you, this is going to be exciting. And this, if you go to, uh, you know, I gave you this, uh, or if you wanted, you could get this uh, list of all the models. If you go to corporate model exercises and then go to exercise seven, this is the one named corporate uh, model, corporate exercise with minimum. Okay. And here's what this has. We're going to uh, work through uh, the same sort of uh, uh, things we did last time. Look, I left the debt balance. I shouldn't have really left that. But if you, and I don't mean last time, I meant the, the, this was, I think, the very first exercise and the hardest, the most difficult part of the first exercise was when you got down to this uh, area of the cash flow statement, you have to do one thing if it's positive and one thing if it's negative. Now there was a little bit of a problem. This technique would allow us to say, okay, if we have positive cash flow required, uh, uh, excuse me, if we have a, 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 a negative cash flow, we could take all the cash we have up here and take it all out of the bank. All right, this was this. And that would have left us with a zero cash balance. But in a lot of models, you put the revenues in here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to make the revenues the same as the heavy door. So we have something that has no operating expenses. Okay, now uh, as with the other uh, exercises, you'll have a blank uh, version of this. Now, there are some percentage of these revenues. That could be the basis for computing the minimum cash balance. That would normally be about 2%. I've made it about, I've made it much higher because we're using EBITDA and I want to illustrate this example. And then, you know, if the thing, if the sheet is closed, shift control, oh, shift control, right arrow, control R. Now, if you want to close the sheet, by the way, here's, you'd like to be able to use the, groupings to cut it and do it but now I used to be a big advocate of this. Now I, I'll call them unhide and I have to unhide all the columns. Click on the entire sheet. Shift alternate left arrow will take the columns away. Okay and then if you wanted to do this you'd select all the columns just to here Shift Alt right arrow. No, oops. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, I've done this uh, about a million times. Shift. Okay, good. You see, Shift Alt. Shift Control right arrow. Shift Alternate right arrow. And then press the number one to hide it, the number two to open it. If that really worked well, it would be wonderful, but. For some reason, after you save the file and open it and close it, sometimes it doesn't work. I don't have any idea. That's not my fault. So shift control, right arrow, control. Line. Now the opening back cash balance we can take from above. What? No, let's stop here. So here's the here's the issue. We need to find out how much cash is op is is needed to meet the minimum and as with everything else we don't know that until we get to the cash flow statement so we leave that blank for the moment just like you leave all the others blank all of the calculations the min and the max and all of these they're taken from the cash flow statement okay now there's a this is unfortunately a little more difficult because we use the opening balance we this the amount we have uh, have to put in for the cash balance might mean nothing we need to see how much this required balance really is it might be nothing if we have a whole bunch of cash on our balance sheet and we didn't have to use it all up 
Okay, it might be positive uh, 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 if we've used all our cash balance up or hopefully do I have a scenario well yes here the EBITDA is growing pretty quickly so we're gonna have to put all our new uh, uh, some new cash on the balance sheet um, even if why don't we do this to make it really tricky let's make that oh I, we have some really high capex but let's put this capex it's 200 so we know we're gonna have to borrow money okay we're gonna have how about let's let's go 500 okay oops so we have a whole lot of capex and, 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 and we're gonna we're gonna have an issue and as you can tell I'm a little nervous now I'm gonna just let's start with this the opening balance equals the closing balance now if you've done this uh, and, and in the book I hopefully can really emphasize this this says okay take added cash balance to meet minimum you know this is similar enough, but getting having the uh, uh, titles very clear is, is is important. Less cash used, cash reduced. It almost should say cash reduced when the cash flow is negative, and that's we put the reductions down here, and these are going to be done with the minimum and maximum. And then after the whole thing is said and done, if we have a bunch of extra cash, we'll put it here. But if our revenues are going really, really high, hopefully that cash has been captured right above. So the placement of these items in the cash flow statement is absolutely essential. This has to be before this subtotal or else we, we wouldn't do this. We couldn't have put this cash after, afterwards. And we couldn't have put this cash really before because we have to see if we're running out of the cash uh, uh, when, when it's negative at least that's what I think today I'll, I'll be different tomorrow so let's get the opening cash balance and then let's say we're gonna let's take away the cash balance to meet the, the negative cash flow uh, okay that was the one I just had discussed with you Reduce cash when it's positive. So we let's make a, a little subtotal. You know, we don't, if we're building up cash, we don't have to uh, worry about this, I don't think. Okay, and then the uh, required balance to meet this is going to be the minimum of either the amount we need, uh, the amount we have or our, our minimum cash balance. Is that okay? And look how our minimum cash balance increased over time. So why even though we haven't plugged in the uh, cash flow shift control right arrow control R shift control right arrow control R. So let's see what happens. We we uh, and of course I did it. Uh, uh, incorrectly okay excuse my mistake that was just horrible and it might be the most important formula of the whole thing we we look at how much our minimum cash balance is and if it's above the amount we have we have to put some more in but if it's negative we don't have to put any more in so we put a maximum of this or zero okay oh, I just can't believe I did that so we, we have to put nothing in here and then we have to put a lot in because our uh, revenues are growing. Now, of course, I have not put anything at all. I've not done anything at all about the uh, uh, actual financing. Do you remember? How, let's see if we can remember how to do this. So we it, let's just read it. It says reduced cash balance. So if the cash is negative, which means we put a, a, a minus on the subtotal and then a zero number one and then we say okay well we'll put the uh, minimum of this now I suppose you could get really fancy and take the minimum of this or the opening balance minus the uh, uh, minimum cash balance but we're I, I we're gonna do it in a more 
straightforward, hopefully, way. And then th this is the same thing. If this thing is positive, that's the maximum of that or zero, then we take the minimum of this or zero. So when it's positive, remember, we're just going to simply pay down our short, it's really our short-term debt. And where is that? So we put our opening balance of the debt here. And then uh, on this one, I suppose it's a little bit different because there's no big calculation in here. But we're just going to put in the the uh, the minimum cash balance that we uh, uh, just computed. Excuse me for going up and down. I, if you're really watching this, I hope your eyes aren't uh, hurting from that. Okay, and then let's make another subtotal and add this. That gives us positive cash flow. Take away the debt we pay off, but also take away the cash we, we, we need. Okay, let's see see what happened here. So what, what happened here is we have some we had some negative cash flow. We could reduce our cash, but then we had to put it right back on the balance sheet because we have a, a minimum cash flow. So we actually have more uh, funding needs than than we thought we were going to have. Okay, and now now remember what you do at the very end if it's going to be uh, 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 if this is a uh, positive number, then we just put it as positive, and if it's a negative number, we put it as positive. If, if it's a positive number, it goes to the cash. If it's a negative number. We have to raise additional debt. Now, the amount of debt we had to raise included the cash balance and included the new minimum cash balance over here and minimum cash balance over here. So we kind of took it away and then put it back. That's one method to do this. Sure, if I would do this tomorrow, I would have kind of a different uh, a result. And I put our balance sheet in and look at that, our balance sheet balances. I, did, I was afraid to look at this. And here's the advertisement, www.financeenergyfinanceenergyinstitute.com, because that's where you find classes that I do for very reasonable price, not these expensive ones. And uh, we'll do a lot more exciting things than compute the, the minimum uh, 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 cash balance. Okay. And on to the next video. And I, uh, I'm going to put music on this one, I think. All right.